All right. Hello, everybody. This is our last topic study group for phase one, which is insane that we're already at this point. Um, one thing I like to remember to remind everybody, like at the end of every phase, is like think back to when you first started this program and how much you've already grown in like, you know, this short amount of time, just to put into perspective how fast paced this program is. Um, OK. Um, today we're going to be talking about topic 10, web scraping, but before that I wanted to set up some context for the project that I'll be kicking off tomorrow. Um, so let me just move all these things around. All right. So in your phase one, you can already see the project. I think a couple of you have already take, taken a look. Um, I think it's a good idea just before tomorrow, just give this a read through. It'll set up like the business problem. Um, Tomorrow I'm going to, you know, briefly go through all of this again, but also tomorrow I'm going to talk more about the setting up of the project. Uh, and I'm going to actually have you do it a little bit differently from what they're asking here. Um, the way that I do it will just have you get a little bit more acquainted with GitHub, which was something that, you know, we did in topic two, but didn't really have the chance to, you know, have hands on experience doing. So, yeah, I'll have you all set it up a different way. It'll all be recorded so you can follow along. Um, just to remember, the project is due on June the 1st. Uh, you take a look at our homeroom. Um, the project is usually due on the first day of the next phase. Uh, so something to just take note of for future projects. We're right now week six. Usually I introduce the project the last, let's see, the third last week of <laughs> each phase. So we're on week six. Um, I'm introducing the project tomorrow, and then seven and eight are technically project weeks, and then it is due on, well, because the Monday of um, of week one is a holiday, uh, it is due on uh, the Tuesday. I'll talk a little bit more in detail about like specific deadlines, because I, as an instructor, I'm a little bit more flexible with deadlines. I honestly don't need things to be... Um, submitted by like a certain date, certain time. So I'll let you all know that more, more about that tomorrow. Uh, but just so you know, if you wanna like mentally prepare like the schedule, um, it's gonna be due June 1st, just roughly June 1st. And also good to get it out of the way before, you know, the other stuff comes. Uh, okay, so that is just in preparation for the project tomorrow. Does anyone have any like burning questions regarding this project that's coming up? Cool. Again, I highly recommend just before tomorrow, give this like a just quick read through. You don't have to start doing anything if you don't want to, um, but good idea to, you know, have it sink in a little bit before I talk about it tomorrow. All right. And with that, let's get into web scraping. Um, this notebook is going to give an overview of what web, web scraping is. If you take a look at topic 10 in our material, all of this stuff, this first half, is actually adapted from our software engineering program. Um, it is a little bit challenging. It honestly took me a little while. We don't need to understand HTML and CSS to that extent. But these are just good exercises if you want to get more acquainted with HTML and CSS. Uh, so I feel like you know, if you just want to get into the weeds of, all right, this is how we web scrape. Um, you really only have to do this second half. This is really more like background information, more in-depth HTML, CSS than we need to do. Um, so just for context, this is adapted from not our program. It is useful knowledge to know, good to know, uh, but you don't need to have gone through this in order to do this second half. And this second half is what we'll be doing. All right. Um, so in this notebook, I'll just be going through like what is most immediately relevant for us. So a bunch of terminology to start, HTML, CSS, and web scraping. HTML is basically what the website is made up of. CSS, I like to think of as design elements. And then web scraping is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking information from the web and you know saving it in our Jupyter notebooks. So um, we're going to be using this example. There's There are a bunch of websites, actually, that are set up for easy scraping. And this is one of the examples that we're going to be using called Books to Scrape. And so all of these examples, I'm actually going to be walking through how we can get all of this information that we see here, you know, books, their prices, their titles, their ratings, all into a data frame. OK, but first, to just set up, 
Um, in terms of terminology, the one thing we're going to be working with is the DOM, the document object model. And so the DOM really just provides an interface for programs to change structure, style, content of web pages. Uh, the DOM is actually what we will be inspecting a lot of. Um, if anyone has had any experience with HTML or you know has any experience doing like web design, or I don't know when you're younger, if you ever like made a blog, I definitely did that when I was in like elementary school. Um, you might be kind of familiar with this. Um, on Google Chrome, if you right click anything, and you go inspect. And I know that there's also a keyboard shortcut. Uh, I forget what the keyboard shortcut is, but you can easily look it up for whatever browser you're using. Honestly, there is some sort of shortcut. It'll actually bring up the DOM of you know the web page that we're going to be scraping. And basically, um, for most websites that are built with HTML, you'll see all of the information just written in that HTML format. And the whole idea of beautiful soup is beautiful soup which is a library that we're going to be using for scraping beautiful soup basically will parse the dom and extract the information that we want to keep so that's the idea of web scraping uh, there are some websites especially like the newer more like fancy websites that don't have this functionality because they're written in you know more complex languages that are not you know visibly uh, the data is just not visible in the dom so there are some websites that you can't really web scrape, like, for example, um, if you have like dynamic websites, like, you know, I don't know what you call that, like if you have like a flash player or something, and the information is not written out in HTML, that will be harder to web scrape, you won't be able to web scrape it with this method. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, basically, as long as you can, let me just widen this a little bit as long as you can find the information that you want to scrape in the DOM. So let's say, for example, I want to scrape this price, right click inspect, and it exists somewhere in the text here, you should be good to go. Just like as a quick overview of like, what can I scrape? What can I not scrape? Uh, as long as you can like right click and find this information somewhere there, it's scrapable. Okay, so there's a, bin a bunch of background information here. I'm not going to go through all of this. This is actually in some of the reading um, in the labs, but important to know this thing is called the DOM. And what web scraping is, is we parse through the HTML DOM. Okay, so Beautiful Soup is a library that we're going to be using. It's a Python library designed for really quick scraping projects. Um, basically, it allows you to select and navigate the tree-like structure of HTML documents. So, you know, what we looked at here, this is the HTML document that we're looking through. It allows us to select and navigate the HTML document, searching for like tags, attributes, IDs, traverse through HTML, and then basically save the information for, you know, use in data frames, use in whatever format we need uh, for our analysis. So as I mentioned before, the example that we're going to try to scrape today is this Books to Scrape website. Um, disclaimer, this website is built for easy scraping. So not every website is as easy as this, um, but I think is a good example to, you know, show the process of web scraping. You know, what is it, what does it look like when you want to scrape like a bunch of, you know, repetitive information? Like I want to get like all of these prices in like um, in a formulaic way, in a in a functionally uh, efficient way. If I want to get you know all of the images, the URLs, the star ratings, um, we're going to talk more about that process, um, which you know can be generalized to any other website. I also want to quickly mention that this is not the only scraping library that exists. Um, there are other scraping methods that um, that exist as well. This is, I think, the most user friendly one. Of course, you know, it is limited when you want to get to more complicated websites like, you know, when I mentioned earlier, when you have like flash elements and things like that, of course, this gets a little bit, it, it, you won't be able to use beautiful soup. Um, some other libraries that you might want to explore, I will say don't worry about it for this project at all. Um, but other libraries that you might want to explore include uh, Selenium. Selenium actually is a pretty neat library that allows you to pretty much like control your mouse and keyboard to like highlight and like copy and paste and literally do all of those actions. Um, and another one is called Scrapey, 
or scrape pi scrape for python uh, that's another scraping library if anyone's heard of it um, if you look on medium there are a bunch of python scraping articles that you know talk about different methods to do so but beautiful soup i would say uh, for most websites works pretty well all right um so let's just get into scraping um very very straightforward with the imports we're going to import beautiful soup from bs4 that's just the way that you import it beautiful soup is on its fourth iteration i guess and then we're also going to import requests and requests might look kind of familiar we did talk about requests um, when we talked about apis last study group um so very very similar you'll see that we're actually going to be using a dot get um, and whereas we use the request.get in APIs to get that JSON from the URL or the URI, if anyone recalls that, not super important right now. But yes, we'll be using request again. So let's run this real quick. Um, two steps here. First, query the HTML of the page that you want to scrape. Um, when I'm scraping something, especially on a page like this, and let me actually close this out. If I want to scrape a page like this that has, you know, I ideally if I were to think about this information in a data frame, how do I want this information to look like in a data frame? Probably be like, you know, each book will be a row. Um, and my columns will probably be like, you know, book title, book price, maybe in stock true or false star rating so that's what my data frame will look like um when i think about web scraping especially on a page that i have you know multiple rows of data on one page i like to go big to small and i'll talk about why that's important in a little bit uh but always think big to small if you think big to small the idea behind that is um, i want to catch all the information first and then sift through and parse out what important information i actually want to keep so big to small. And that's why when I do request.get, I'm just gonna get the entire website. So first, this first line here is making a get request to, re to retrieve the entire page's HTML. Um, this sort of just gets the page. And this second part is where we're starting to parse the HTML. So you always need these two lines when you're getting HTML. And I'll sort of show you all what this looks like. So when this is run, um if i just output soup you can see that it's actually giving me you know the html of this entire website or, or of this entire page um if you want to make it look nicer in an output i don't honestly think it makes it that much nicer wait hold on i think you need to add this um, no maybe this is right anyways um, sometimes this helps with this, the spacing out of things. Um, but yeah, so now we have all of the HTML stored in our variable soup. Um, and so what we're going to do in the following steps is pick out the information that is important to us from our entire soup. So this soup that we have here is actually equivalent to when we do right click inspect. Uh, the soup is equivalent to what we have here. Um, what we have output in that variable soup is exactly what we have in this jumble here. All right, so we're going to get into our scraping right now. So um, again, when I talk about scraping, I mentioned the whole big to small thing. Um, now we are at, you know, we have the entire page. Um, the next thing I'm going to look for is how do I get just one book? Uh, usually getting one book is a good place to start or one item. Um, Google Chrome does this. I'm not too sure about other uh, browsers, but other all other browsers have a similar functionality. But Google Chrome has this button where you can select an element to inspect, where I can basically hover over and it will like bring me to different parts of the HTML. So I want to show you all the difference between highlighting like a specific part of a book versus the entire item. So if I highlight this entire item here, and sorry, I only have one screen today, uh, but if I highlight this entire item, this thing that is highlighted here 
will encompass all of the book's information versus just selecting, you know, just the title. If I only select just the title, it'll literally just give me like the title here. Um, my advice for scraping is try and get everything that you want for a certain item together. Um, logic behind that is, let's say you decide to do everything separately. And on this page, I think I have like what, 20 books. Yeah, if I have 20 books on this page, let's just say that, you know, I get 20 titles, 20 prices. Um, and then let's say maybe for some of the books, I don't have the ratings. And then so as I'm scraping the ratings, let's say I only have like 18 out of 20 of the ratings. If I don't get all of the items together and I try to rematch up all the separate pieces of information, it's a little bit harder to figure out, okay, which was the book that didn't have ratings? Um, so because of that, again, big to small, I like to first figure out, okay, where can I get as much of one single row's information in one container as possible? And so that's just the difference between doing something like, you know, okay, getting each price versus getting, you know, a container that contains the entire book. Okay, so let's just say, let's just try and get this very first a light in the attic book. And so it seems like, you know, literally just by like hovering my mouse around, the thing that will get me all of the book's information is this kind of green box here. And when I click into that, and I think, yeah, all other browsers should have similar functionality, it highlights this class here. So anything that is within this belongs to a light in the attic. So what I'm going to tell my uh, beautiful suit to do is to just parse through and get this. Um, so the way that you do that, you sort of have to understand there are different parts of an HTML tag. So part of the HTML, first it has like what kind of tag it is, and that would be like the first word that comes after the open triangle brackets. And so this will be an LI tag. LI, I think, stands for list. So here I'm looking for an LI tag. Um, another example, this would be a div tag. This would be a P tag, H3 tag, so on and so forth. Everything that is within LI, and as you can sort of see, um, there's always like an open and close. So LI kind of opens here and closes here. So every time you see like a backslash with the same word, it's closing the tag. So everything that's within this LI tag is contained within this one line. And you can sort of see from here, there's a bunch of the same LI tag. And uh, we'll see this later, but this is actually, each of these is a book. And within each one has all of the book's information. So we have the LI tag, and this class is actually an attribute of the LI tag. So one way that we can look things up in Beautiful Soup is by its tag and by its attribute. So let's go back into our code and take a look and see what we have here. So for Beautiful Soup, the two most common methods that you're going to be using uh, are find all and find. Uh, they're very, very similar. The only difference is find all will find you all of the things that match, and find will just find you the first one. Um, sometimes it's useful to use either one. Um, because I figured out that um, each of these LI tags is for a, a specific book, I figured, okay, might as well just get all the books. And so the syntax for find all, and there's actually different ways to do find all. In your labs, you'll see different ways of doing this find all. But the way I'm doing it here is it takes in two arguments. The first argument being, all right, I want you to look for an LI tag. And then the second argument is look for this attribute. So I literally just copy and paste li from here. And then this class equal to, I just copy and paste this call xs6, sm12, whatever this is. Copy and paste that, say look for the class that matches this. And then I end up with this result over here. So this is a lot. So let's just explore what this result is. Okay, um, from soup.findall, um, 
as we as we've done a few times with other things, if we want to explore what it is, let's just see what type it is. Uh, okay, it's a result set, but technically it's a list. Um, let's see. Let's look at length. Okay, cool. There's 20 elements in here. I think based on the output here, you can see that it's wrapped in a list, 20 elements. Um, something I also like to do, as you all know, is take a look at the first one. And cool, it fits on one page here, so we don't have to scroll too much. And it does look like this is the information for one book. A little bit messy, but you can sort of see that, all right, let's see, there's star rating in some way here. Um, there's light in the attic. It is in stock. It's the price here. Um, there's, I guess, an add to basket button as well. And we can parse all of this information later on. But um, now what we have here, I, it's a non-technical term, but I like to call these mini soups. So each of these mini soups um, contains information for one book. So basically this result here contains 20 mini soups for information on 20 different books. And the 20 different books are basically 20 different books that, let me just move this, 20 different books that appeared on this page. All right, uh, any questions at this point? And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna assign first 20 to this variable. All right, so just a quick exploration to make sure within first 20, we have 20 mini soups. And let's just work with the first one uh, because likely if a website is consistent, if you can get a parser to work for the first one, you can get them working for all. So each element in this first 20 list is you know, a bunch of HTML that all we have to do here is we really just wanna clean this up into a format that we can use and turn into a data frame. Mm, so let's just first think about what information we want. Um, and so based on this code here, um, the information that I'm gonna pull out, and actually let me put that in a cell here, we want to find the URL for the book. So for example, you know, I want to bring it to a product page here. I want to get this URL. I want to get that. I also want to get the title of the book. I want to get the price. I want to get whether it is in stock. And I want to get the rating as well. Yeah. Cool. So these are all the, this is the information that I want to get. And as you can see, all of the information kind of already exists in here. The hard part is, you know, getting the right thing out. All right, so let's go one by one. Let's just start with the URL. Um, if anyone's kind of familiar with uh, HTML, and no worries if you're not, usually links are stored under A tags. Um, and you can sort of see that um, when you hover over, um, a link, usually in the bottom of your screen, you can sort of see here, like the link pops up. I can't like, oh yeah, you see down there on the bottom left, like the link pops up. And so we wanna get that link. If I inspect this, you can see that that link comes up in an A tag, A with href, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think we're pretty lucky in here because the only a tags all link to the same thing. So let's see, yeah, there's like one A tag here, one A tag here, and they both, I think, link to the same thing. And the way that A tags work, actually, let me first pull it out and I'll explain. Um, here, I'm gonna use a find, uh, because find, I just said, as I mentioned, just gives you the first result. I'm just gonna look up A tags. So let's do it step by step. So first has, you know, all of this, Let's do find A. Cool. Find A, you can see that here, this is actually our URL. It doesn't start with like a www. What's this called? Books to scrape.com. Uh, because hrefs just know that there's a base URL, and whatever's in the href is just what you append to the end of the base URL. Uh, it's just the way the websites are built, it just knows that, you know, there's a base URL and you're just going to pin whatever is under, under the href to the end of it. So that's why it's not a complete URL. Rather, it's just, you know, the thing that you append to the base. 
So here we find a cool. We have our information stored somewhere in here. Um, what we actually want is just this string within, you know, the href equal whatever. So the way that we do that, it actually kind of works like a dictionary. Um, so in order to pull that out, all you have to do is uh, call it like a dictionary, whatever attributes there are within the a tag. And this is honestly something that when I was first starting out, I just trial and error this uh, with like different methods of pulling things out. Um, but I figured that, okay, once I get this href out, I have what I need. So cool. I know that with this code, I'm able to get, you know, the URL to the book's product page. Um, this is a very, very uh, similar process to whatever scraping you'll be doing in the future. Every website is built differently. Um, it's a lot of trying to like, you know, maybe you're doing like finds on top of find all, which is what we just did. Maybe you're doing like finds on top of finds on top of finds, depending on how nested the HTML is. And so sometimes it's really, really helpful to, you know, if you can print out just what, you know, what the HTML looks like and try and figure out, okay, how am I going to get the information that I want? You're going to go back and forth a lot between doing that and also doing like, you know, the right click inspect on the web page itself. Um, just because HTML is, you know, pretty messy, honestly. So it's a very, very regular process. Like I would say, like I would put aside a good amount of time if you know you want to scrape something uh, to really just explore how this website is. And usually once you figure out how to do it for like one item or one page, it's a lot easier to replicate that. So I think it's easier to, you know, start with one item first, uh, go big to small, start with that one item first, and then just replicate that. Okay. So we managed to find our URL. Great. Um, we're going to put this into a function later on or a loop, and then we'll see how we can replicate this for other URLs. But let's move on to other parts of, uh, of this book. So let's see where we can find the title. Um, so the title I know through looking at this or actually through doing an inspect again. Sorry, the screen is pretty small. So let's just say, OK, this is what the title is. Let's do a right click inspect. And I see that the title is technically here but didn't really show up. So let's just see, all right, maybe it's in the H3. So one way that we can look at it is here. It's in the H3 in the A tag. Again, this is also pretty trial and error um, because if I first do the find A, the title doesn't really appear there. I mean, you could technically also do a find all and see if it's in there. If we do a find all and then maybe get the last element, you can sort of see the title's kind of there. Um, many ways to get to the one result. But I found that the easiest way for me, at least the cleaner way to do it, was to find the H3 first and then find the A on top of that. So let's do that step by step and let's get rid of this so it's not distracting. So we do a first of find H3 and say, all right, cool. You see our title is here. Um, if I try to do title straight away, you realize, okay, there's no title. It came up with a key error. And so, okay, let's look at that one more time. So it turns out there is a nested A tag within the H3 tag, and that's where title is an attribute. And so, you know, when you run into errors like that, it's like, all right, let's look at it again. What went wrong? Why is it giving me that error? And so that's how I figured out, okay, let's just pull out the A tag. So find A, cool. We're, uh, we've narrowed it down and we need to get this title. And that's where I end up with this code here. So this is equivalent, found the title. Cool, we got the title. Any questions at this point? Cool. So the next thing we're going to talk about is finding the price. So the price is also in here. Um, sorry, I wish my screen was bigger, but let's just do an inspect again. Right click inspect. You see that this comes up here. 
price color and you have our 5177 pounds and it's under a p tag with the class price color so that's what i'm going to find p tag class price color when i run that cool we get the entire tag and as you can see the information that we want is actually between the open and close tag um, so there's kind of a difference between what's an attribute of the tag and what's actually within the tag. I don't know the specific terminology for HTML here, but earlier what we were doing is for these other um, examples, you see here that what we wanted was actually, was actually an attribute of the tag. So it was actually within the open tag of the A. Um, but now what we want is, you know, between the open and close tags. So the way to do that is just dot text. If I want to get something that is in between the open and close tags, it's dot text. So you can see here dot text gives me 51.77. I think dot content is also something. Okay, not really. Sometimes, never mind, I think I'm remembering something different, but okay, dot text is what gets you what's between the open and close tags. So cool. So, so far we have our URL, we have our title, and we have our price. Okay, next we want to see if it's in stock or not. Um, it's actually right over here. Let's just do the quick inspect to see. Cool. Very similar process. In stock availability. Um, if I run this real quick, you can see cool. In stock or not in stock. Um, we can clean this up a little bit later. I think if I do dot text here, you can see that we have all of this, which we'll clean up later. As long as in stock is in here, that should be fine. And next, we're going to get the star rating. Star rating is a little bit more complicated, and I'll show you all why. Let's do a quick inspect on the star rating. Cool. So under this P class, it says star rating three. Um, and then, you know, some other like star icons. So let's pull this out and see what it looks like in our Jupiter. Um, let's see. So let's get this one. Oh, actually, let me pull up this specific one first as an example. So we do first dot find all, and we do a P tag with class well star rating three cool we get this which is great it says the word three that's awesome but this is not generalizable enough because what if there's you know non-three star books this code would only work specifically for three star books this is a very very specific example uh, where we're going to use something called regex to solve I wouldn't worry too much about this now, but you know, if you see something that's kind of similar, you can definitely use this. Uh, but uh, regex is something we're only going to talk about in like phase four, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. But what we're doing here is we're doing like a wild card. So if through um, through exploring this, like as an example, let's just explore this one. Where's the inspect button? There we go. Okay, so for this one star, you can see it says star rating one. For another example, let's see this one. If we take a look at this over here, you can see it says star rating four. So you kind of need like this wild card to just capture everything that says star rating, whatever. And so that's what regex helps us with. You can see what we're doing here is we're compiling a regex term, uh, and we'll talk about this more later on, but this is basically wildcard. It's a wildcard term. So it's just going to look for anything that says star rating wildcard. And then we're going to do the find where the class is equal to this wildcard. Um, so if you come across anything that's similar, please talk to me about it so we can walk through a specific example. But for now, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But I did want to explain you know, that this is what can sometimes happen. So even though we didn't look for the specific star rating three, we were able to get this result here. Um, 
Nice. And then within the class, we can get that it is a star rating of three. And just by default, it actually came up as a list of two strings. And so if I wanted to get, you know, how many stars it is, I can get like, you know, the last element, maybe I like turn that into a number, write an if statement, loop, whatever. Um, and yeah. Cool. So technically, we've gotten all the pieces of information. It is all very segmented through these many, many cells. Uh, like we have our URL, our title, our price, in stock or not, and star rating. Um, now all we have to do is put it together. Um, and there are many different ways to do this. I like this method because for me, it's easy to keep track of things this way. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to store each book's information into a dictionary. And this is a function that I've written. Of course, you can write your own function. Uh, this function is going to take in one of the book's mini soups. So it's really going to take in something like this and run all of our find and find all statements to store our information into a dictionary. Um, breaking this code down, and this is, again, not the only way to do this. But as you can see here, info is my dictionary. Um, and I'm actually creating new keys of title, price, in stock, stars, and URL. So I'm creating all of these into, um, I'm creating all of these keys in this dictionary and storing all the information. I'm gonna run it real quick, just so that we can see what it looks like. And actually, let me just run it on clean scrape first. So when I run that, I get this dictionary with, you know, title, price, in stock, stars, URL. Um, let me walk through how that was done. So book is going to be the mini soup. So all I'm doing is I'm just taking all of this code that I did for, you know, this first mini soup and just putting that into my function. Uh, because first was my mini soup and I knew that as an example, doing this find h3, find a index title. Since I knew that would get me my title in my function, I did the same thing here. Book.find h3, find a title and store that as the title. Same for price. Um, here, if you remember, uh, let me actually move this one down. Sorry, this is a little bit messy. But if you remember our in stock availability sort of looked like this. Um, one way I decided to deal with this was to see if the word in stock was in this, put it as true or false. Uh, so that's why I have, all right, if in stock is in this string, store true or false. Again, I think this entire website doesn't have any examples of not in stock. So to be even more certain, I would look for a not in stock example and see, you know, how can I edit this if else statement. If I did that, and then I have the stars there as well and the URL there as well. Um, so this function runs on a mini soup. Again, not a technical term, uh, but this function basically will parse through the HTML of a mini soup, turn it from something like this, which I mean, information is there, but it's hard to read into a dictionary like this. Questions at this point? All right, so that's what I meant by big to small. Uh, now we've done this for one single book. Let's do this for all the books on the page. Um, if we remember, the page gave us 20 mini soups in a list. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here, you can do this as like a for loop. I decided to do this as a list comprehension and use my clean scrape function um, for each book in first 20. And so by doing this, I essentially did all of this. I did this whole process for all the 20 books on the page. So if I output book dictionaries, you can see that I have 20 dictionaries all cleaned of all of the books on the page. Even easier if I want to turn it into a data frame. Oops import my pandas. Um, data frames actually take lists of dictionaries really nicely and turn them into data frames perfectly. So here, I have my data frame of my books. 
Um, of course, not ideal to have the stars like this. This is something I can clean up later, do like a replace of like, you know, if I see this string, turn it to number one, two, three, four, five. Maybe I want to like clean out the, the pound sign from here if I wanted to. Um, you can do all of that cleaning. It's a lot easier to do the cleaning in pandas sometimes. Uh, but just like that, I have 20 pieces of information from one page of data. All right. Um, so kind of similar to what we were talking about with APIs, uh, I think our New York Times API example also just gave us like 20 pieces of information. Um, with 20 pieces of information, that's great, but you know, likely you want to do it on, you want to analyze, you know, more than 20 data points. So we can move on to pagination. And pagination, if you remember, was a term that we also had in APIs, is just the process of putting multiple pages of information together. So on this website, and let me close this out because I don't think we need this anymore. On this website, you can see that there are 50 pages. Great, 50 pages times 20 books will have a thousand, a thousand books. Um, because I got this information from this URL, if I click on to next, you'll see that, all right, the URL changes and I can very likely run the same code with this URL and get all of this information. And as you can see here, if I click next, this URL is a little bit small, but it's basically books2scrape.com slash catalog slash page3.html. And if I click next, the only thing that changes here is the page number. So we can do something with that. We know that the URL, uh, as we go like page by page, the only thing that changes is the page number that we're on. Just to test, let's just say I wanna go to page 24. Cool. We, it actually does show us the results of page 24. So we can use that to our advantage as we try to you know, mass scrape this information. So um, one other thing to check, just, you know, uh, I just like to make sure that everything is as consistent as possible. Let's just see if this worked for page one. So page one, sweet, page one worked. Of course, it is the same information as, you know, the base URL, but, um, you know, as long as we can be consistent, that's always good. So my URL looks like this. What I can do is I can create a list of URLs and knowing that the only thing that changes is the page number here, I can use, I use list comprehension here, but you can do this in any other method. I can just create a list of URLs to scrape from. So just like that, I did a quick list comprehension, you know, substituting this number with numbers from one to 50. Um, again, you can do this in many different ways. But now I have a list of URLs that I can potentially parse through uh, to get all the books information. So as you can see here, not much code left. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm going to get 20 books. Um, so this get 20 books uh, function will basically call on the URL um, and run my clean scrape function. Let me break this down again. It's going to call a request.get on a URL, whether it's you know the first one, second one, the last one. It's going to call the request.get on a URL, parse that content, run that find all for that class. You know, if you remember this class referred to the mini soup for each book. And then on top of that, run the clean scrape function for every book. Uh, within that page. So this function actually calls on my other function that I wrote before. Again, many different ways to do this, uh, but I found, I personally found that this was the way that made the most sense to me. But yeah, get 20 books. Uh, this function will basically get 20 books from any URL. If I run this, and if I just do get 20 books, and let's just get, I don't know, page 43 as an example. Cool, just like that, I have my list of dictionaries. So I chose to not put it in a data frame yet and you'll see why, um, but I mean, I have all the information here. I can turn this into a dictionary as well. So I can do like pd.dataframe and there, if I want, it can be in a dictionary. 
So this function here, basically I just have to feed it in a URL and it gets me all the 20 books information utilizing uh, the function that I had for cleaning a single book. All right, so what I'm doing here, the reason why I didn't put it in the data frame to start is because I just wanted to, you know, create the entire list first and then turn the entire thing into a dictionary. So I made another list to just store all the dictionaries. And then I did for URL and URLs for these 50 URLs, um, just add my 20 books of information each time. Uh, remember, I'm doing an, a dot extend instead of a dot append. Um, dot extend, if anyone remembers, just adds on elements to a list versus appending everything as a new element. If I don't want to get into that right now, but basically, yeah, I'm just adding 20 new elements to the list every time. So run this really quickly. It's going to take a little bit of time because it is scraping for a thousand books. Let's hope this doesn't take too, too long. While this is running, any questions? Well, I guess it's done running, but any questions before uh, this is pretty much the end, but yeah. Cool. So I've printed the length of this all dicks list a hundred, a thousand. So great. We have 1,000 results just like that. Um, all dicks is a list of 1,000 dictionaries, which I can turn into a data frame like that. And done. I have pretty much every book that is on this website, just like that. Cool. Any questions? Awesome. I think it is pretty cool that in like less than an hour, you managed to create all of the information that lives on, you know, this website. Of course, this website is built for, uh, for scraping. So it is a little bit easier to scrape just by nature, uh, but also a little bit scary, right? The fact that we can get all of this information that's on a website onto our computer so quickly. Um, definitely consider the ethical implications of, you know, scraping data from the internet. Um, I actually personally got very interested in like data ethics when I was scraping something uh, like from Reddit, I was able to just scrape a bunch of information from Reddit and I thought that that was too much power. So there's a lot of uh, reading out there if anyone's interested on like data ethics, I think that's something that's really good to keep in mind. Um, there's that and ooh, also one more thing I wanted to show you all. This is not in uh, this is not in the curriculum, but I think it's a very, very powerful tool. So sometimes information, let's see, let's just pick a random, uh, let's pick a random Wikipedia page to scrape. So Wikipedia is actually a pretty fun website to scrape as well. So if you just want to practice your, oh, cute owls. Um, if you want to practice your scraping, Wikipedia is a good one. Uh, let's see if this is a good example. Uh, unfortunately, not a great example. Okay, I know a good example is like Game of Thrones. Um, if you ever come across in your HTML, like as you're, you know, inspecting, if you ever see, oh, let me just make this a little smaller because I can't really read this. Um, I want to go to television series. If you ever see tables, uh, there's actually a really neat tool for scraping tables. And I just want to find an example of where are all the episodes? Let's see. Oh, I guess this would work too. All right. So this exists in like a table format. And if I do like inspect on a table, it usually says like TR or TH or something like that or T, yeah, table class. Uh, beautiful soup and tables don't work well together which is kind of strange, right? Because, you know, we want to get it into a table format in Panda's data frames. Why doesn't it work well? Um, it just doesn't. I've tried scraping tables with beautiful soup. It's usually very, very messy. Something that I would like you all to be aware of is Pandas has a really neat built-in function uh, called read HTML. Um, and I believe this is the right way to do it. Very, very slim to read CSV. But you know, you just give it. Um, I think you give it a web. Let me just try this out real quick. Okay, cool. So when I ran this, 
what read HTML does is it parses through any website and looks for all the tables that exist uh, within a web page. And what it returns is actually a list of data frames, which is really neat. Um, because I know that these tables are not, these tables are not like, what's the word? They're not, uh, they have like the merge cell, so that might mess things up a little bit. But this is a list of, uh, let's see, GOT tables. This is basically a list of data frames. So we take a look at type of this. It's a list. If you take a look at the length, there are eight tables. Um, and let's just take a look at some of them. Look at the first one. You can see, all right, cool. This is, I guess, like a warning table. Let's see if hopefully there's something more useful here. Okay, great. Uh, this is an example. Sometimes you just have to like look and see where the important table is. But just like that, we have an entire table already in a data frame format. Um, you can sort of see here that, oh, this is actually pretty nice. Uh, we have like the, I guess, the actor, the character. And I think this is like for all the seasons, like how important they were in the season. Um, so just, I want you all to be aware of, if you ever needed to scrape something that was in a table, use pandas.readhtml because that will be a lot easier than, um, than trying to figure out like the parsing with beautiful soup. Um, so yeah, don't feel like you have to use beautiful soup for scraping all the time. Yeah, so let's see what else is in here. I don't think there's too much else. Okay, yeah, that's not, a, that's a messy example, but maybe this information is important, but yeah, just wanted you all to be aware of that. Cool. Um, so we scraped a bunch of things. Does anyone have any questions? All right, well, similar to the API section, it is not necessary to scrape uh, information for this project. Of course, tomorrow I'll talk about some data sources where you could scrape data if you would like to incorporate additional data. But uh, if you look at the project prompt, there is a lot of data that is um, provided for you. Uh, the catch is the data that is provided for you is a little bit messy on purpose to just test your data cleaning skills. Uh, so if you decide that you don't want to focus on the data cleaning aspect, you can get additional data from an API or by web scraping. So those are kind of like the two options, or you can do both, but uh, that's kind of a lot. All right, then. Well, that is all I had to share for today. Does anyone have any final thoughts before we close out? Perfect. Well, with that, I will see you all tomorrow. Uh, as usual, let me know if you all have any questions. I know a lot of you have uh, evening, that we've been doing evening one-on-one -on -one slots, and I know that ever since I got back to the US, my hours have shifted back up. Uh, so if, if like uh, if nine to six hours don't work for you at all, please let me know. I really do want to figure out how we can you know meet consistently still. So let me know if that's something that doesn't work with your schedule. Uh, we can talk about it and figure something out. All right. Well, with that, have a good rest of your evening, everybody. And I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Thank Bye, you. Everybody. Have a good night. Bye. Have a good night.